Bruh. Lord. Lord. As everyone laughs at the way I read your tweet. <laughs> I can't even do it with a straight face. All right, RC, with a Super Sunday edition of Explain Your Tweets, there is no better Twitter follow while these games are going on than Ryan Clark. Here we go. The first one. That's two for Patrick. Best ever thus far. Only chasing the GOAT Tom Brady for me at this point. Man won the whole thing with Juju being his biggest threat outside and a defense that got ran through like competitors in a young Andy <laughs> Reid's punt pass and kick tourney. RC, explain that tweet. First of all, y'all saw Andy Reid in that punt pass and kick. Andy Reid was a grown man. He kicked that thing out of the stadium. But think about Patrick Mahomes and where he is right now in his career. We've gone through all of his accolades today. But when you think about who he was coming into the league, no one expected Patrick Mahomes to be this. And since he's been the starting quarterback of the Kansas City Chiefs, he's been the absolute best in the league. The hardware says it. The film says it. And every time that Patrick Mahomes steps onto the field, we say this. The other team could be better. The other team can be close. But in the end, we believe in Patrick Mahomes more than we believe in anybody. It's like Tiger against the field when mm. we knew what was happening on Saturday in that red shirt on Sunday Absolutely. in that red shirt no question about it and, and, and Mahomes frequently in a red shirt as well uh, working his way uh, up historically all right next tweet Andy Reid is minding the Eagles in the red zone RC explain that tweet Man, it was like watching the stinking mentalist. Andy Reid just knew what to do. He comes out and they do the ring around the rosy huddle at one point. And then after they do the ring around the rosy, they say, oh, we know what you're going to do. When we put somebody in motion, you're going to try to bump the coverage. When you bump the coverage, we're going to snap it right there, get somebody to the flat. We're not just going to do it one time. We're going to do it two times. And then when you have to, when you have the numbers in the box, you hand the ball off to Isaiah Pacheco, who every time he runs the football he's running it like everybody's chasing him and he don't have no money it's absolutely phenomenal what Andy <laughs> Reid and Eric Bieniemy were doing with guy. that offense now now I, I read that more correctly now I see <laughs> it says mine now I see I what it actually what it actually <laughs> said okay uh, I, I get it I get it. all right one more uh, here's I mean how about I mean let, let's give some love to Jalen Hurts no matter how this ends there are no longer any questions about Jalen Hurts squash all that Damn. here's he's their guy RC explain that tweet you know what I think this one to me was the most simple to explain you know, if you watch Jalen Hurts' career, you were thinking maybe they were going to put Gardner Minshew in the game at halftime. Or maybe he was going to have to go play for another team to finally be respected. Jalen Hurts coming into this game, the talk was about two black quarterbacks starting the game for the first time. The other conversation should have been that it was the MVP and the MVP runner-up. And Jalen Hurts was every bit of that. Everyone talked about what would he be like on the largest scale? How would his injury affect his play? Jalen Hurts was absolutely phenomenal throughout the entire day. He did everything we watched him do throughout the season to earn our respect. And I think going forward, there are no more questions about this young man. He was incredible last night. And I mean, it, it almost seems laughable that the questions about him at one point were about his ability to throw the ball yeah. with accuracy. Some of those throws to Goddard, I mean, the, yeah. the, the contested throws that he was making that they had to be literally in the tiniest yeah. of windows that he put exactly on the money. I thought he was sensational. That's the best game I've ever seen Jalen Hurts play. And Greeny, to your point, some of those throws to Dallas Goddard, honestly, I was up in the booth with Lewis and Levy calling, and we were like, wow. Yeah. Wow. I mean, he made three or four throws you, you shouldn't even attend. Yep. Yeah. You know, because they're so tight and so dangerous, and they were perfectly placed. And I remember – I remember the throw he made against the Giants game this season, and I came on TV and I was like, I've never seen a quarterback improve when it comes to ball placement the way Jalen Hurts has. And that was accurate. That was a, a factual statement. His performance last night that third was 14. Oh my gosh. 14 corner pass to Goddard was yep. a, a interception. That. If you are one inch off in any direction, exactly. it's an interception and he throws it and completes it. And to have the confidence to take a shot like that means he really has faith in his arm. And as, as athletic as he was and how important his rushing attempts are to this offense's decision making, we don't want to overlook the fact that also he's turned into 
a pinpoint accurate quarterback too. He's he's risen up to that level. Four with the touchdowns guys, so. and lost. It, yeah. it was spectacular last night. I, I opened the show by saying I thought he was the best player on the field. Bart gave me a funny look. Now, I understand Mahomes. I'm not suggesting he should have been the MVP in no. defeat. Don't get me wrong. But but I mean, if you ask me who was the best player on the field last night, I thought it was Hurts. Ninko, we've talked so much about him going into these games. You know, they, they got to hit him and all that kind of stuff. His ability to play with that shoulder. I mean, he looked 100% healthy, and I agree with Dan. He had a brilliant season. I thought last night was the best game I saw him play all year long. Yeah, I agree with that as well. And, you know, there was one thing in this game that I kept saying to myself as a defensive lineman linebacker, short yardage with the Eagles and Hurts and what they're able to do in those yard-to-go situations, goal-to-go situations with that quarterback sneak. Everybody in the stadium knew exactly what was coming, but Kansas City could not stop it. It was that front it was that scrum down low. It was Jalen Hurts using that strength and the guys behind him pushing him forward. I mean, th that is really one of those plays that's that's a toughness that's a toughness measure. Like who's tougher? We have to go one yard. Can you stop us? And every single time in that formation, the Eagles were able to just basically hold on to the football, extend the drive, get the first down, score a touchdown. And it, you know, Jalen Hurts. This future is so bright, like it's it's unbelievable because now we know there's no question about his throwing accuracy, his throwing ability, his running ability. He's got it all. Yeah. Also wanted to make sure we didn't miss that part where Jalen Hurts was the most mature person on the entire Eagle <laughs> sideline. Remember when they had that? Um, it was a review, and Sirianni's like kind of trash talking the the uh, the Chiefs. <laughs> yeah. And Jalen yeah. Hurts grabs his arm like, "Come on, Dad, stop yeah. embarrassing me. Uh, ch chill out, bro. We got a game to win." <laughs> that, that's why yesterday's devastating, though, in my eyes. <laughs> like yesterday's a devastating loss yeah, in Philly, though. Yeah, it is. Candidly, because the quarterback play so well they're up 10 in the <laughs> at halftime they have the best rush offense we've seen in years in the NFL and they don't finish the job and they're gonna have to pay them a ton of money like that's why yesterday's a devastating loss and they have a legendary defense that had all those sacks this year and they didn't have any last night yeah. on Patrick Mahomes why RC you're in the stadium why was their well, defense which was so good all year why was it not last night I mean, let's think about what we saw from the, the Kansas City Chiefs against the Cincinnati Bengals, who had put on a ton of pressure on teams throughout the season and the way that they protected Patrick Mahomes on the bum ankle in that game. And then you come into this game as well. And when you think about Eric Bieniemy and also what Andy Reid <coughs> were able to do, they ran the ball more this game because they realized that the Philadelphia Eagles facing the run weren't as good as they were when they were had opportunities to pin their ears back and get to the quarterback. There was also the creativity and getting the football out of Patrick Mahomes' hands when they had the right opportunities to get the football into their playmaker's hands for yards after the catch. And the other piece was this. There was always an extra guy in blocking. They always used the running backs to chips. There were the tight ends that were involved in the pass protection as well. And then there's Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. When he needed to use his legs, when he needed to be creative, he did that as well. How about it, Dan? I know you have some tape on this defense. Yeah, the big thing was that Kansas City paid attention on offense and started to take what Philadelphia was going to do versus certain looks and or motions and use it against them. So this is a stack up top. It's man coverage. Now, when the motion goes, they're going to do what we call rock and roll. The corner is going to replace the safety. The safety comes comes down and takes that motion guy. They're trying to out leverage the jet sweep essentially. Great. So this is second down. They hand it off. All right. Andy Reid, Eric Bannerman going, okay, that's how you're going to handle the motion. Very next play. This is the very next play, third down. Get into that very same set. Now the, the motion comes from the bottom. Now watch Darius Slay because this looks like that jet motion. He's going to go back, play the safety. Safety's going to go in, out leverage that jet look. Instead, to Kadarius Tony with speed on the motion, puts his foot in the ground and comes out. Uncovered touchdown. They paid attention on second down and realized they got information for third down. Here it goes again. Second down. There goes that jet motion again. The, the nickel is going to kick to the safety. Safety wants to get outside leverage because of the handoff on the jet sweep. This time it's a pass. Second down. Patrick throws away. They're going, okay, guys, they're still doing the rock and roll. Very next play, third down. Let's get into that same look. See how they handle it. There goes that jet motion. We're going to get that rock and roll where the nickel's going to replace. Safety's going to go down. Put your foot in the ground. Come back where you came from. Touchdown. This is great coaching. That's I, Everything about this is great coaching. Them seeing how Philadelphia was going to handle that little red zone motion 
And on second down, seeing it and going third down, here's our counter for touchdowns. I'm, I'm so glad we showed that because I'm all right. sure all the fans like me were yeah. watching the game last night. Why are these guys so open down by the goal line? It's one of the reasons why the Chiefs are always so good because red zone efficiency is so important. So many games are decided by what team scores touchdowns and what teams have to kick field goals. I think Sirianni and the Eagles win with the aggressiveness on fourth down. Yeah. But Andy Reid and Eric bien certainly won with the little tweaks here and there inside to make sure that they had the advantage in the red zone. Those two plays, remarkably well done. Ninko, thank you for jumping in here this morning. We appreciate it. Our guests will continue.